now we are going to see a Carnot cycle. So Carnot cycle is very important from thermodynamics point of view and here in the discussion of second law of thermodynamics why Carnot cycle actually important because I have written few lines over here that from second law of thermodynamics it has been observed that the efficiency of heat engine is less than 1. I have already explained this one before that heat engine efficiency or thermal efficiency cannot be more than 1 because some amount of heat must be rejected from the heat engine so that way numerator must be lesser than the denominator so that way uh, the efficiency of heat engine always will be less than 1. Now if we then what is the maximum efficiency of heat, heat, heat engine? If you want to quantify, if you want to know that what is the maximum efficiency of a heat engine, then that answer can we can get by using this kind of cycle. Okay. So the scientist <coughs> actually he was a uh, he was a French engineer actually, so Sadi Carnot. He was introduced, he introduced actually that uh, Carnot cycle and the concept of Carnot cycle is executed by a Carnot engine. Suppose if you consider that Carnot cycle on an engine then that engine is known as a Carnot engine. I have shown over here a block diagram uh, for a Carnot engine. The same kind of block diagram you have seen for the heat engine also. Just inside of the circuit the cyclic device I named by a CE that is Carnot engine. Now, Suppose uh, if I derive the efficiency for Carnot engine, then you can see that what is the maximum efficiency, what will be the maximum efficiency for a Carnot engine. Okay. That we are going to see over here by using the Carnot cycle. Okay, so first of all we should see that uh, what are the different processes actually uh, it, uh, in, uh, in a Carnot cycle. If we plot the Carnot cycle on PV and TS plane, it will look like this. This is a PV plane and this is a TS plane. This 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 2 and 4 to 1, they all are reversible process, firstly. Okay. So what are the processes actually? So I can label it like this, that process uh, 1 to 2 first. Okay. So that process is the first process if we consider. So in this particular process, actually what kind of thermodynamic process it is? Firstly, it is a reversible, all are reversible processes there. Reversible isothermal, reversible isothermal heat addition process. That means in this particular process, heat is being supplied to the system. Okay, so I can write Q or I can write in terms of Q1 basically in terms of heat engine that Q1 is supplied in so that's why I can write it Q1. So reversible isothermal heat addition isothermal means it is a constant temperature process ok. So in this process actually what actually occurring here? So if you consider a cylinder piston arrangement then a cylinder head is basically coming with a contact with the source of temperature. Suppose a hot body is keep having a contact with the cylinder head. As a result of that, the gas, whatever stored inside the cylinder, it will be getting expanded. Okay, so that, that gas expansion will be occurring uh, with the help of that reversible artisanal process. Okay, so that in that particular process, while the process is uh, reversible isothermal, that point of time, and that quantum process you can show over TS plane also. In TS plane, it is like a horizontal line, must be a parallel with the S axis because it is a constant temperature process. Here, the heat is added to the system. Okay. So uh, I have uh, labeled two temperature plane is there, one is T1, so T1 and T2 they are having the same temperature that is of T1 and T4 and T3 they are also having the same temperature that is T2. Okay, so for 
our process 1 to 2 if we want to quantify that what amount of heat is added then I can write that we know that Q is equals to or I can say from the first law Q minus W equals to Q that law you all know from the first law so I can write that same law over here so Q1 is nothing but basically it should be du change of internal energy or I can write that Q is it is also a dq or dw uh, that term basically I omitted it is q and w in differentiation so that is why d cut will be there ok so what amount of heat is actually uh, supplied that can be written u2 minus u1 that is a change in internal energy from state point 2 to state point 1 plus work done w1 to 2 so basically while the process is <coughs> isothermal process so that point of time we know that the change in internal energy that is du du is nothing but equal to cv into dt we know that in relation for a unit mass of fluid I can write the change of internal energy that is Cv into dt it is for ideal gas and we are considering the ideal gas ok so change of temperature while the process is isothermal the change of temperature will be 0 because the process is isothermal so in this particular process that u2 minus u1 it will be basically 0 because the temperature is same so u2 and u1 they are basically equal with each other so i can write that q1 is nothing but w1 to 2 and it is a expansion process so reversible isothermal heat addition it is a expansion process because the working fluid will be expanded due to the supply of heat okay now coming to process 2 to 3 that process 2 to 3 is basically a reversible obviously reversible adiabatic process reversible adiabatic and it is also a kind of expansion that expansion process is being started ok so that point of time that um, it is a adiabatic reversible adiabatic expansion process 2 to 3 that's why we know that reversible adiabatic process is also known as isentropic process that means entropy will be constant and you can see 2 to 3 is a vertical line that is a constant entropy line ok so in this particular process the cylinder heat actually the heat source is being removed and the cylinder head is becoming insulated that point of time the actually that uh, gas is expanding from T2 tem temperature to T3 temperature T2 point to T3 point actually the expansion process is executing from temperature plane T1 to T2 ok so it is a completely expansion process is a reversible adiabatic process so reversible adiabatic process means what that means no heat transfer will be occurring there so dq is nothing but zero over here because it is a completely insulation, insulating process that means the uh, cylinder is completely insulated no heat will be transferred uh, to the system as well as from the system it is a completely insulated process so no heat transfer will be occurring so if you adopt the same uh, formula same same first law over here so i can write that q is nothing but zero that is equals to change in internal energy so that is nothing but u3 minus u2 final internal energy to the initial internal energy plus work done for the process 2 3 okay so that way i can write that work 2 to 3 is nothing but u2 minus u3 ok 
now for process 2 to 3 then uh, 3 to 4 process 3 to 4 is nothing but the same process that is reversible isothermal but heat rejection will be there heat rejection that means that process is heat rejection heat is rejecting that is amount of Q2 because I have shown here Q2 ok so in this particular process the system is brought into contact with the sink that means that it is contact with the sink then the heat will be rejected to the sink ok and obviously we know that while the heat is rejected from the system or coming out of the system then it should be um, coming with a sign of negative sign because by sign convention we adopt that thing and the change in internal energy that should be u4 minus u3 and obviously <coughs> it is a kind of compression process is going on because uh, you can see that 3 to 4 that volume is being compressed that it is being actually cooled so that is why its volume is being compressed so that way that work done should be negative 3 to 4 and similarly like the 1 to process the change in internal energy obviously for isothermal process is 0 so that term is basically getting 0 so finally I can write that work done is nothing but equal to W3 4 that means work done for the 3 4 process is nothing but equal to Q2 ok and the last process whatever uh, I have explained over here that process 4 to 1 that is nothing but process 4 to 1 that is similarly reversible adaptive process or as I say isentropy but it is a compression process it is a compression process you can see volume is getting contracted so in this particular process also dq is 0 because it is a reversible adiabatic process no heat is being transferred or exchange so here also like the process 2 3 i can write 0 the heat transfer will be 0 and the change in internal energy that is u1 minus u4 final internal energy minus initial internal energy and it is also a compression process so the negative work done would be there so it is work done 4 to 1 so finally I can write that work done 4 to 1 is nothing but u1 minus u4 now this 4 equation already uh, I will generate it for this particular Carnot cycle now what we are going to do we are going to sum up of all the heat and all the work that means suppose this equation just mark the equation whatever we have derived this one and this one now use this equation this one and this one now what we are going to do we are to, going to sum up of all the process all the four process we are going to sum up then obviously that sum sum up if we going to sum up summing up all the process so what will happen you can see q1 and y1 q2 is there so basically I am taking this equation taking the minus q2 term so I can write that q1 minus q2 summing up these two sides 
as well as this u2 minus u3 term will be there basically i am trying to keep work all the work at the right side and rest of the term in the at the left left hand side so q1 minus q2 keeping left hand side as well as this work done suppose without taking this particular equation i am taking this one so it will help us i am taking this part equation as well as mm, now it's okay okay so w23 is nothing but equal to minus of u3 minus u2 isn't it w23 is equals to this term will go to the left hand side so w23 is equals to minus u3 minus u2 then mm, similarly in this particular equation w41 is equals to minus of u1 minus u4 and at the right hand side of the equation all this work i am keeping w12 then plus w23 then taking minus as common so it will w34 plus w41 taking a minus as a common okay so now just i have summing up all the sides of the equation left hand side and right hand side i have summed up nothing else okay so u3 minus u2 and u1 minus u4 they will cancel each other actually because we know that change of internal energy is nothing but cv into uh, dt change of temperature okay for the ideal gas we know this equation and u3 minus u2 you know that u3 minus u2 that is basically nothing but the temperature suppose uh, if i use that particular equation so what it is giving us minus u3 minus u2 that is nothing but uh, one minus is there so if i write minus u3 minus u2 that is nothing but minus t3 minus t2 one cv is there okay and you can see t3 is equals to basically t2 so i can write minus cv instead of t3 i can write t2 minus t1 isn't it and similarly for minus u1 minus u4 in a same fashion i can write minus cv instead of u1 if i write t1 so it will be t1 minus t4 and in a same fashion t1 will be there and t4 is basically t2 now you see these two equation now you see these two equation basically they are the same thing that minus cv into t2 that here it will giving you plus cv into t2 so while you are adding both them both so actually they will cancel each other isn't it so these two term actually they are canceling each other okay so finally i am getting q1 minus q2 that is the actually uh, amount of heat supplied to the system minus amount of heat rejected from the system that is the net heat net heat is net nothing but equals to that is the net work done because w12 and w23 <coughs> work done for the process 1 2 and for the process 2 3 minus w34 plus w41 so that is this whole expression is nothing but the net work done <coughs> because work w12 and w23 both are expansion process so they will some produce some work and similarly w34 and w41 they are compression process so they will consume some work so the amount of work production minus the amount of work rejection or work consumption whatever is it 
the net if you subtract both of them so it will be the net work done they will produce some work and it will consume some work so interval of both of them it will be a net work done so finally we can see that the net work done is nothing but the am <coughs> uh, difference of heat supply to the difference uh, difference between the heat supply and heat rejection what amount of heat you are supplying it and what amount of it is rejected from the system interval of them that is the net work done okay so from there i can write that thermal efficiency each are thermal is nothing but w net to q1 so w net is nothing but q1 minus q2 and divided by q1 so it is giving you minus 1 minus q2 by q1 so that expression already we have seen in case of the heat engine but how it coming that is our derivation by carnot cycle you can see that for a carnot engine the efficiency or thermal efficiency is coming like this okay now we we are going to see that uh, if the carnot cycle uh, carnot engine is uh, uh, working for a ideal gas then uh, what will be the efficiency for that that means the working medium if it is the ideal gas then how the expression of thermal efficiency is going to be changed 